During the past 100 years, air power has evolved technologically and operationally. From the groundbreaking work of the Wright brothers to the technologically sophisticated weapon systems of today, the United States Air Force is the preeminent air and space power in the world. But getting off the ground wasn't easy. Orville and Wilbur Wright of Dayton, Ohio, had successfully invented the technology needed to control an airplane in flight and made their first successful test flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina on December 17, 1903. Returning to Dayton, the Wright brothers prepared a proposal to sell their new technology to the United States government. At first, though, their proposal was ignored. It was not until 1907 that the United States Army established an aeronautical division in the Signal Corps, and during the next two years, the Army and Navy began to take the first steps to turn the airplane into a weapon. The consensus of the military's leadership prior to World War I was that air power was not and could not be a decisive factor on the battlefield. In fact, meetings between aviators high above the battlefield were gentlemanly. As the war dragged on, however, exchanges between aviators became more hostile as each side attempted to deny the other valuable reconnaissance information. The high point of air power during World War I came when Brigadier General William Billy Mitchell planned and executed an ambitious plan fielding 1,500 aircraft as a Battle of San Miguel. And you might say, that is when aviation really took off. Aviation research and development was spurred in 1917 when two laboratories, one at Langley Field, Virginia, and the other at McCook Field in Dayton, Ohio, were established. In 1918, the labs were combined to form Engineering Division and were assigned the mission of carrying out research, development, and testing of military aircraft, engines, airships, and accessories. By that time, the Air Service was operating a number of supply depots located throughout the United States. The depots received, stored, and issued supplies and equipment to the airfields and performed aircraft repair and maintenance. By 1924, depot operations were providing support to airfields worldwide. In 1926, the Material Division was created under the newly established Army Air Corps. Located at Wright Field, the Material Division played a central role in fostering technical progress and maintaining an industrial base in American aviation during the period between World War I and World War II. In March 1935, General Frank Andrews took command of the newly formed General Headquarters Air Force, which consolidated all the Army Air Corps tactical units under a single commander. Through his leadership, the Air Force started the development of air power that became the mighty U.S. Army Air Force in 1941. On December 7, 1941, the Day of Infamy, the United States and its armed forces were plunged into the most costly war in history. Between 1940 and 1945, the United States produced approximately 300,000 military aircraft and grew to over 2 million personnel. With the British bombing by night and the Americans by day, the combined bomber offensive, led by the B-17, was credited with grinding Germany's war machine, specifically its air power, into the ground. Germany fighter defenses were much more formidable than anticipated, and fighter escorts were developed and integrated into the bombing missions, clearing the way to the targets. On September 18, 1947, the Army Air Force achieved independence as the United States Air Force. It was established as an autonomous Air Force, but would not have control of Army, Navy, and Marine Corps aviation. The Air Force continued to expand throughout the 50s and 60s. Weapon systems grew in strength and size. Hangars were rebuilt to accommodate the larger, newer aircraft. Maintenance equipment was upgraded and logistics processes were redesigned around improved distribution and computation of requirements, and contractors were hired to assist with a monumental workload. Computers continued to grow in the importance and complexity. By July 1961, the Air Force Communication Service had been established as a major command and managed the Air Force's growing communication systems. In 1952, the United States detonated the first thermonuclear bomb at Enewetok in the Pacific. Then, just nine months later, in 1953, a stunned world learned that the Soviet Union had detonated its own hydrogen bomb. The Cold War was really heating up. Over the next three decades, the United States Air Force evolved into the most powerful air force in the world. Whether supporting the war effort in Vietnam, pushing back aggression in Operation Desert Storm, or facing terrorists around the world, the United States Air Force is ready to respond anytime, anywhere, in any manner necessary. The Secretary of Defense is the principal defense policy advisor to the President and is responsible for the formulation of general policy, 
and policy related to all matters of direct concern to the use of the military in America's defense. Under the direction of the President, the Defense Secretary exercises authority, direction, and control over the Department of Defense, whose mission is to provide the military forces needed to deter war and to protect the security of our country. The Air Force is one of the four branches of the military that report to the Office of the Secretary of Defense. The mission of the United States Air Force is to deliver sovereign options for the defense of the United States of America and its global interests to fly and fight in air, space, and cyberspace. Through global vigilance, global reach, and global power, the Air Force is building out nation's full-spectrum air and space force. The United States Air Force consists of the regular Air Force, the Air National Guard while in the service of the United States, and the Air Force Reserve. The men and women of our total force exemplify our core values, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. The Air Force is proud of its men and women, achieving success by recognizing the diverse backgrounds and experiences of all. An example of the Air Force's diversity is the Tuskegee Airmen, who were the first all-black flying regiment. These skillful fighter pilots delivered one of the lowest bomber loss rates during World War II. Through their commitment to integrity, service before self, and excellence, the Tuskegee Airmen made major contributions to our success. There are ten major commands established to execute the Air Force mission. Each major command, or MAGCOM, performs a specific portion of the Air Force mission. As such, they are interrelated and complementary, providing offensive, defensive, and supportive elements. The Air Combat Command organizes, trains, equips, and maintains combat-ready forces for rapid deployment and employment while ensuring strategic air defense forces ready to meet the challenges of peacetime air sovereignty and wartime air defense. The Air Education and Training Command recruits, trains, and educates quality people for air and space forces. AETC grants professional education degrees and provides basic military, technical, and flight training. The Air Force Space Command assures access to space for America's warfighters. Additionally, the command's ICBM forces deter any adversary contemplating the use of weapons of mass destruction. The Air Force Special Operations Command is America's specialized air power and provides combat search and rescue, agile combat support, information warfare, psychological operations, specialized air and space mobility, and refueling to unified commands to support wartime tasking. The Air Mobility Command provides airlift, air refueling, and special air mission and aeromedical evacuation for U.S. forces. AMC supplies forces to theater commands to support wartime tasking. The Pacific Air Forces provide ready air and space power to promote U.S. interests in the Asia-Pacific region during peacetime, crisis, and in war. The United States Air Forces in Europe plans, conducts, controls, coordinates, and supports air and space operations to achieve U.S. and NATO objectives based on tasks assigned by the Commander-in-Chief, U.S. European Command. The Air Force Reserve Command provides the nation's leaders with Air Force Reserve units and people who are trained and ready for duty at a moment's notice. The Air Force Material Command develops, acquires, tests, and sustains air and space power needed to defend the United States and its interests today and tomorrow. The Air Force Global Strike Command provides nuclear and conventional global strike capabilities. It aligns ground-based ICBMs, bomber forces, and other deterrence capabilities to conduct operations in support of combatant commanders worldwide. The United States Air Force continues to grow and evolve to respond anytime, anywhere, in any way necessary, relying heavily on the dedication and innovation of the men and women supporting operations around the world. From the first Wright Flyer to the Joint Strike Fighters and unmanned aerial vehicles of the future, from the First World War to the War on Terrorism, the men and women of the United States Air Force combined to form the most prestigious and powerful Air Force in the world. The United States Air Force. You make it happen.